Understanding variables becomes important the minute you want to work with dynamic data. And they are a necessity once you allow user input or have some sort of forms. In this video, we're going to have a look at what makes variables so powerful and how can you implement them in your Bravo project. Let's quickly go over the table of contents. We're going to start off with the question, what are variables? And I won't hold it against you if you skip that part if you already know what variables are. After that, we're going to have a look at some samples of when variables are necessary and take a look at some use cases there. We're then going to have a look at how we can actually use those variables in our Bravo project. And lastly, of course, we're going to have a look at some troubleshooting tips. So what are variables? You can think of variables as a placeholder name that holds a value. And every time you call that placeholder name, you actually get the value behind it. Meaning that through the name of the variable, you're able to access that value in different parts of your app. Another nice aspect of variables is that the value that it holds is not fixed. So you can basically change it to be whatever you like at that moment. In a real world example, that could look something like this. You probably have already seen one of the tutorials on this channel where a list is linked to a detail page. And for the app to know which detail page it should show, we're going to use a variable. Bravo uses the placeholder ID to then fill it with whatever the user clicks on. So if you have a list of detail pages, the user clicks on one of those detail pages, Bravo knows which ID to fetch and performs the Airtable request with that ID. Variables are also necessary when you have a form. Obviously, you don't know what your user will write yet. So, you're going to put a placeholder in your request that will then get filled with whatever the user writes in this text box. You could even use variables inside of your header if you have some more complex authentication methods. Before we jump into Bravo to build two of these use cases, why don't you consider subscribing? Before you can use a variable, you have to declare that that text is not just some text, but actually a variable name. You can do that by putting it in curly brackets and then adding a dollar sign in front of it. Now Bravo knows that this is to be interpreted as variable. You can use variables like these in your request URL, the JSON body, or your request header. Let's have a look at the request URL first. There are actually two types of variables that you can use inside of a request URL like this. You can either define your own custom variable or you can use one of Bravo's built-in request URL variables. I will make separate videos for each of them in the future because they are very specific and more advanced. So let's first start with creating and using your own variable. We're going to have a look at that list and detail example that I mentioned earlier. This is going to be a two-step process. We're going to start off by using the variable first, so using our dollar sign and the curly brackets, and then we're going to define where the value for this is coming from. Let's imagine you have the design for the list and the detail page already. And let's also imagine you have the Airtable set up correctly, so we can just jump right into Bravo. If you're uncomfortable with that, take a look at the video in the description. There you will learn how to create those list and detail pages and how to connect them to Airtable. For the sake of this video, where we're going to focus on the variables, I'm going to skip those steps. Here in Bravo, we're going to first go to the URL of the detail page. We have this URL from the Airtable API documentation. And as you can see, Airtable expects an ID. This is the only way they'll know which page to display. Before you give this variable a name, let's take a look at some naming convention. Don't put spaces in here or use special characters. Additionally, it's helpful to choose all names on the same structure. This is good practice, meaning that it's not mandatory, but it can help you in the long run. A popular option to make everything look clean is camel case, and it looks something like this. Now that we've given our variable a nice name and know where it's going to be used, it's time to associate it with some data. We're now no longer looking at the detail page, but the list page. This is going to be the first request done by our users. So we have to set the value for the variable ID here already. 
Again, this URL is taken from Airtable's API documentation. First, click on send so we know which data we're going to have to deal with. This is all the data Airtable is going to provide us with. And we can already see that we have a record ID here. This ID here is exactly what we're going to want in our detail request later. To use it as a variable, go to selected data. Now, choose the ID from the list and give it your variable name. Now, every time you request this URL, the record ID will be associated with our variable name. We can immediately use this sample value to test our detail request. Just copy it here and paste it in the detail URL. We already have the variable in here, so you can just head over to test values and paste it there. Hit send and see if the detail request is working. Now you should see the data from exactly this record being displayed. Now let's recap the flow. First, the user requests the list. For every record, we're going to associate the record ID with our variable. The user presses one of the list items, which takes him to the detail page. We know exactly which item was pressed, so we can take that record ID and paste it into our detail request. When you use a form, that data does not come from a previous request, but from the user directly. I will now show you how you can bind that user data to a variable. Again, we're going to assume that the form page is properly set up. If you have problems with that, there's a video for that in the description. We are again starting with where we want our variable to appear. And that will be in this post request. You can get a sample request body from Airtable's API documentation again. Now we're going to replace the sample data with our variables. You can name the variables similar to the property that they belong to, to make it easier finding them later. Again, you can test that request in the test value section and then have a look at Airtable to see if your request went through. We're now going to define which user input should go with which variable. In Bravo, we're here in our project view and we're now going to head over to our form screen. In the form screen, select your input element. This is where proper names for your design elements come in handy. I have now found my form element and I'm going to select the variable I wanted to replace. We're going to start the troubleshooting part with some disclaimers. First of all, the variables are not cached by Bravo, so you have to request them every time. Secondly, global variables are not possible. Let's have a look at an example that wouldn't work. So you wouldn't be able to have a variable inside of Bravo that saved the last five pages the user visited. That brings me to some general rules. Firstly, make sure that the variable knows its value from the previous request. When going back to our list and detail example, that would mean don't have a request in between those. So for example, a list request, then some random data, and then the detail page. Because the detail page wouldn't know anymore which list item was pressed. Secondly, make sure that the same variable has the same name every time. The naming conventions I talked about earlier can help you avoid typos. Lastly, don't use the same variable name twice. The system and you will both get confused. To sum up, Variables are placeholders, and you can use their value across your app. Use cases include dynamic pages, so our list and detail request example, or user input forms. If this video helped you, I would be happy to see you liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you for a new episode of Build It With Jonas next Tuesday. Bye.